Eugene Sandow was a kid, he was very sickly and weak, and he wanted to get healthier. And the way he found health was through physical fitness. And he worked out every day, pushed himself harder, and eventually became the strongest man on earth. Under Attila's direction, Sandow learned to lift heavier weights, and the heavier weight that he used, that made his muscles grow larger. I related to Sandow's story because I was a very skinny kid. My mom used to call me Skinny Minnie, and I um, had a lot of anxiety about it. My dad bought me a weightlifting bench, and I would work out every day. After a few months of working out, suddenly I had muscles, and people would notice, and they were like, Don, is that you? I, I saw Don at the store and he's got muscles. And that made me feel great and it boosted my confidence. I looked better, I felt better. Um, I felt more confidence as a just a human being in general. Many years ago, I competed in natural bodybuilding. I was inspired to do so by my brother, Brian, who had won a statewide bodybuilding um, contest. The thing that stuck out to me about that show was these guys were just regular, everyday people um, who were working out every day, eating right. If you're gonna become the best bodybuilder, the best poser that you possibly can, then you gotta stand in front of a mirror and hit your poses. Sandow was the father of, of all of that. The next year, then I competed in my first show, and I lost. And I was so um, defeated, but I, I wasn't ready to give up, and I went back to the gym and I worked out. And I won two trophies that night. And it was the best feeling in the world. And so I kept telling myself that I wanted, you know how we tell kids to write what you know. Um, I knew about physical fitness, I knew about bodybuilding, and so I wanted to try to put that into a story. And then one day while doing the research on the internet, this image of Sandow pops up and he's holding up this huge um, barbell. And I thought, who is this guy and what is his story? So if I could have dinner with Sandow, I think the thing that I would really want to know is, did he really lift a piano over his head with an orchestra of eight people on top? Um, I would want to know the secret behind his wrestling with the lion. Um, I would want to know, could he really lift a thousand pound barbell over his head? So I would want to know his secrets. I was not a sports kid. I did not like sports when I was a kid. I actually played baseball for a while, but I was the kid who was in the left field praying that the ball would not come my way because I knew I was not going to catch it and I definitely wasn't going to throw it very far. So it's interesting that even though I wasn't a sports kid then, I'm a gym rat now. Doesn't make a difference whether I'm in the pool, whether I'm in the weight room, whether I'm in the yoga room, or whether I'm creating the illustrations for my books. I'm going to always give it my 100%. Typically, I swim anywhere from 80 to 120 lengths of the pool. So all the way down to the end of the pool, that's one length. And so I do that about, well, 80, 80 times at least. I think that it's so important for kids to do the research, find out where their local pool is, take swimming lessons. For instance, here at the YMCA, my son and I, when I first started swimming, we came right here. We took a month-long swimming course together. I'll get up in the morning and I'm going to tell myself I'm, I'm not going swimming today. I'm not going swimming today. I'm not going swimming today. And by two o'clock, I'm in the pool swimming. So I absolutely love it. What I like to tell kids is that your body um, serves as the house for your brain for the entire length of your life. And if your brain lives in a raggedy house, um, it's not gonna function very well. So in order for your brain, in order for you to do as well as you possibly can in school, you need to take care of your brain's house, take care of your body, feed it, um, good food, um, exercise it. Our bodies were not made to be stationary. Our bodies were not meant to sit behind the TV all day long. Our bodies were not meant to hold our phones and look at our phones and play games all, long, all day long. Our bodies were meant to move, and that was one of the things that Eugene Sandell often pushed in his books, the importance of kids getting up and moving. Well, actually, I discovered yoga many years ago as a kid. Um, whenever I would go visit my grandmother, she had yoga books stashed away in her drawers. And so my grandmother practiced yoga. However, she never practiced in front of us. And I will admit that I probably was drawn more to the contorted yogis in the books. 
I discovered body weight styles of yoga where you're using your body almost as, as if it were a barbell or something. Yoga helps me to clear my mind and to calm myself down. So I, when I think about a kid in school who's getting ready to you know, take a test or you know, do some ex, you know, extensive writing or whatever, if they could just practice their pranic breathing, that would help them to, yoga just really helps anyone in their every, everyday life. And so I think that kids could really benefit in school. On the back of my book, I have a special page of um, exercises and activities that kids can do at home. Um, basic things like push-ups. Um, I don't really want to encourage kids to work out with weights because I, I, you know, their bones are still growing, their bodies are still growing. Weights may not be the best way to do exercise, but kids can certainly run and jump and tumble. Go to your YMCA, learn how to swim, Take a dance class, take karate lessons, go out for soccer. Um, there's so many ways that kids can keep themselves physically active. I don't do anything in moderation. And so I found that when I'm illustrating, I'm constantly trying to do, to create the best possible book that I can. When I'm in the pool, I'm trying to be the best possible swimmer that I can. That's just, that's just kind of who I am. I love Twizzlers. Anyone look at my Pinterest page, you're gonna find that I have a whole Pinterest page on Twizzlers because I love Twizzlers. However, Twizzlers are full of sugar, which are not good for my body. Um, but as long as I don't spend my entire day eating Twizzlers and I offset it by going to the gym and swimming and, and exercising, then I can occasionally have those indulgences. And my book is Twizzlers Color. You can't, you can't beat that. <laughs> <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.